Tal Volcano Eruption, Latest Updates and Impact Tal just gave us another little cough, didn't it? Two quick blasts on October 1st and 2nd, sending a grey column two and a half kilometers into the sky. No fiery lava fountains, no Hollywood-style shockwave, just two minutes of steam-driven thunder. It's a potent reminder why this lake-filled volcano sits only 60 kilometers south of Manila. If you're wondering what these latest bursts mean for the capital, for lakeside towns, or for your weekend plans, stay put. We'll unpack the real numbers, separate hype from hazard, and show you what daily life looks like when the ground beneath you never quite settles. What actually happened? Let's start with the basics. At 9.32 a.m. on October 1st, something fascinating and a little terrifying occurred. Water inside Tal's main crater instantly flashed to steam as superheated rock met the lake. This mix exploded, hurling ash northwest toward the provinces of Batangas and Cavite. Almost like an encore, 24 hours later, the show repeated itself. Same height, same drift. Five Volks, our ever-vigilant Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, logged both events as Frieta Magmatic. That's a fancy scientific word for steam-driven, not magma-charged eruptions. After assessing the situation, they maintained Alert Level 1, the lowest rung on their five-step scale. Translation for us laypeople, yes, there's unrest, but a major, catastrophic eruption isn't considered imminent. It's important to note, too, that while these events occurred around the same time as a significant earthquake in Cebu, High Volks confirmed there was no direct connection, just a cosmic coincidence. Their seismic stations recorded 46 volcanic quakes in the last 24 hours leading up to the blasts, most too weak for us to feel. They also noted a steady exhale of sulfur dioxide hovering at just under 1,192 metric tons per day. And for those wondering about the volcano itself, ground tilt meters show it swelling by a few microstrains, think millimeters across an island the size of Manhattan. So, the mountain is definitely breathing, but it's not bulging toward a big blow. Why steam, not lava? Think of Tal as a giant kettle with the burner turned to low. When magma inches upward, it superheats groundwater. Pressure builds until the lid pops, and boom, that's Frieto magmatism in action. It's an explosion driven by the rapid expansion of steam not fresh lava breaching the surface. No molten rock flows, but the blast can still pepper roofs with gritty ash and even trigger lightning inside the plume. The 20T20 eruption was a different beast entirely. Magma reached the surface, sending fountains hundreds of meters into the air and ash drifted as far as Singapore. This time, thankfully, the magma stalled underground, so the show stayed mostly steam. Scientists call these recent events minor because the energy release equates to roughly a magnitude 2 earthquake, noticeable to instruments but rarely to us on the surface. While alert level 1 indicates low-level unrest, Five Volks reminds us that sudden steam-driven explosions, minor ashfall, and the release of volcanic gases can still occur. immediate impact on the ground. Despite the dramatic photos you might have seen, damage so far is refreshingly light. No barangays were evacuated, and classes continued online in towns already under modular learning. Flights at Ninoy Aquino International Airport only dipped to half capacity for about six hours while the ash cloud drifted north. The biggest headache came from volcanic smog, or VOG, that reduced visibility to two kilometers over parts of Laguna Lake. Residents described the air smelling like burnt matches, and motorists used low-beam headlights at noon. Health officials, as always, handed out the usual advice. N95 masks, plenty of water, and stay indoors if you have asthma. Happily, 
hospitals report no surge in respiratory cases. Farmers on the volcano island did see their vegetable plots dusted with ash. But surprisingly, this thin layer should actually boost yields once rain mixes it into the soil. For now, the official economic toll sits at zero pesos, a far cry from the 6.7 billion peso, USD 120 million, hit from the 2020 eruption. Living inside a permanent danger zone. Tal Volcano Island is legally a permanent danger zone, PDZ, meaning human settlement is officially banned. Yet, around 4,000 people still call it home, lured by fertile soil and free land. After each burst, the military tries to ferry them out, but many drift back within weeks. It's a complex dance between survival and safety. I once spoke to Rodel Perez, a seaweed farmer who refuses to leave. He told me, the volcano feeds us. We just have to respect her mood. His family keeps a banker ready, a go bag with canned sardines, and a radio tuned to DZMM for the next alert. Their gamble illustrates a wider truth. In the Philippines, hazard and livelihood often share the same shoreline. Local governments, learning from past events, now stockpile masks, goggles, and water drums on the mainland, so evacuees can be self-sufficient for 72 hours, that critical window before national aid arrives. This proactive approach is part of a broader community adaptation strategy to frequent eruptions. Environmental ripple effects. Tal Lake is a unique ecosystem, home to the world's only freshwater sardine, the Tawillis, and a rare freshwater snake that dives for fish. Ashfall, even a minor one, clouds the water, cuts off sunlight, and can disrupt the lake's delicate food chain. After major eruptions, fish kills sometimes surface weeks later when dead plankton sink and rot, sucking out vital oxygen. This month's thin ash veil isn't expected to trigger that devastating spiral, but biologists will be closely watching dissolved oxygen gauges. On land, the ash carpet can stress forest birds by coating insects, their primary food source. Happily, most birds simply relocate to the mainland until rain washes the vegetation clean. And here's an unexpected winner, orchids. Volcanic ash is rich in minerals, and growers in nearby Tagaytay are already reporting greener spikes, debunking the viral nonsense. It's almost predictable now, isn't it? Within minutes of the October 1st blast, algorithmic gold rushers posted AI-generated clips of mushroom clouds and lava bombs the size of buses. One video even spliced footage from Italy's Etna and falsely claimed it was Batangas. Fivolks was quick to call these posts dangerous fiction and urged the public to share only official alerts. Here's a good rule of thumb. If the plume looks twice the height of the island's coconut trees, and the clip ends with a cinematic zoom. It's probably fake. Real eruptions are messy, grey and, let's be honest, often quite boring to watch after the first minute. Always cross-check timestamps with the agency's live stream. If the angles don't match, swipe away. Misinformation spreads faster than ash, so be a responsible digital citizen. Forecasting the next move. Volcanologists often dislike the prediction question, but trends do offer clues. Since 2020, Tal has settled into a pattern of restless periods every 18 to 24 months, each capped by minor phreata magmatic bursts. GPS data show the volcano inflates slowly between events, then deflates after the steam escapes. If that rhythm holds, the next hiccup could arrive late 2026. The wild card, of course, is if magma continues to rise and switches the game from steam to lava. Fivolg says it would raise the alert to level 2 if quakes exceed 50 per day, gas output doubles, or the ground tilts beyond a micro-radian. None of those thresholds have been crossed, but instruments are now sampling every 30 seconds. Fivolg is also setting up additional monitoring stations to enhance surveillance of gas emissions, seismic activity, and ground deformation. Tourists planning hikes in Tagaytay can breathe easy. Just keep a rain jacket for ashfall and download the agency's Volcano Tracker app for push alerts. How to prepare without panic. Even at alert level one, small habits save lives. Store a week's worth of canned food and drinking water in plastic jugs. 
Ash will clog roof gutters and contaminate rainwater tanks. Keep N95 or even a simple cloth mask in your car. Surgical masks won't stop the finest ash. If you wear contact lenses, switch to glasses during ashfall. Grit between the lens and cornea can scratch your eyes. Seal gadgets in Ziploc bags and set aside a battery radio. Because cell towers sometimes shut down when ash gets into generators. Finally, map two exit routes away from the lake. Traffic jams are often the real killer during evacuations. Share this checklist with neighbors. Community drills beat solo heroics every time. The 2020 eruption shaved 0.3% off regional GDP through lost tourism, agriculture, and fisheries. This month's burp is too small to even register, but investors still watch Tal the way markets watch hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico. One hedge fund analyst told me off the record that coffee futures tick up whenever Tal sneezes because Batangas supplies 5% of the country's beans. So far, price moves have been statistical noise, but a major magmatic event could spike regional coffee prices by 20%. Likewise, property values in Santa Rosa and Calamba have softened since 2020. Buyers factor in ashfall cleanup costs. Yet, Tagaytay's Ridge restaurants remain packed every weekend, proving that volcano tourism, like the volcano itself, dies hard. The overall economic impact on the wider Philippine economy from minor eruptions remains minimal, but the local effects can be significant. Community Solidarity in Action Within hours of the October 1st blast, local youth groups launched Chung Ash Fall PH, a hashtag that matches donors with families needing roof tarps and face shields. This system, which started in 2020, now runs like a mini Red Cross. Riders on motorcycles zip through mountain roads delivering supplies because heavy trucks can't navigate ash-slick switchbacks. Meanwhile, universities open dorms for evacuees, splitting classes so half the rooms stay empty for social distancing. This effort shows that when government keeps data transparent, civil society often fills the gaps faster than any top-down program. If you're outside the country and want to help, cash is still king. Shipping bottled water across oceans costs more than buying it in Manila. Key takeaways. So, what did we learn? Tal erupted twice, steam not lava, and the only thing truly hurt so far is our social media feed. Alert level one stays, meaning enjoy your laksa in Tagaytay, but please don't picnic on the island. Ashfall is more nuisance than nightmare if you keep masks, water, and a radio handy. The volcano will almost certainly erupt again, maybe next year, maybe tonight, but the rhythm is watchable and the science is solid. Trust official sources, ignore AI-generated disaster porn, and remember, the best emergency plan is the one you rehearse before the mountain wakes up. Stay safe, stay informed, and if you hear a low rumble that lasts longer than your morning coffee, grab the go bag and walk uphill.